Deep beneath the mountains of New Zealand, two cave explorers are swimming along a recently discovered passageway. The depth is nearly 400 feet and the water temperature just 6 degrees above freezing. The glacial waters flow fast through this tunnel and the divers are careful to swim as gently as possible. Breathing mixed gases from high-tech rebreathers, any overexertion can cause carbon dioxide poisoning, which is rapidly fatal in this extreme environment. The divers are part of a team of Australia's foremost cave explorers, led by Adelaide diving physician Richard Harris. Richard has returned to this cave on four previous occasions, lured by its mysterious unplumbed depths and the many unanswered questions it poses. In the Arthur Ranges of New Zealand's South Island, the Pierce River emerges from a cave beneath a cliff, and Harris's team are swimming against the current to discover the river's source. Somewhere, no one's sure where, surface water disappears down a hole and comes up at the Pierce resurgence. Dye tracing may help, but so far has proven inconclusive. This year the team has reached the staggering depth of 194 metres and from there the shaft heads straight down, promising to make this the deepest cold water cave in the world. Composed largely of black marble, the cave is dark and forbidding and presents unique challenges to the team. No roads reach this remote wilderness location, so all five tonnes of diving, camping and scientific equipment are flown in by helicopter thanks to the skills of the legendary Kiwi bush pilots. Once on site, the divers spend nearly three weeks living in the bush, diving into the near freezing spring each day until they're ready to push the end and explore the unreached limits of the cave. But above ground, the hardships of the dive are eased by the pleasures of camping in the pristine New Zealand rainforest, home to the endangered blue duck, which has become a lucky mascot for the team. And luck is what's needed, along with months of planning and research. The Pierce resurgence is a dangerous cave. In 1995, Dave Weaver lost his life attempting to explore the main shaft. In the frigid waters, he was overcome by narcosis and carbon dioxide and sank lifeless to a ledge nearly 300 feet down. His body was recovered by an Australian team two years later. It's going to catch up. Harris's team has faced its own challenges. On two occasions, distant rains have caused a flood pulse in the system, radically increasing the flow and causing flash floods on the surface. If divers had been in the cave when this occurred, the result would have been disastrous. Oh, well. Now Harris's group is pushing deeper into the cave. At 600 feet, a mere glimpse of new tunnels comes at the cost of 10 hours decompression. High pressure gases accumulating in the body must be released slowly to prevent them fizzing up like a bottle of soda, causing the potentially fatal bends. This means waiting for hours at carefully calculated depths while the gases disperse. To prevent the divers succumbing to the cold while they wait, new technology is being developed to sustain them. Habitats have been placed at four locations in the cave where divers can escape the freezing water to sit in a trapped bubble of air. There's no escaping the wait, but at least they can communicate with the surface, take food and drink, and avoid the deadly chill of the water but many hours in a plastic box still takes its toll. Man. Craig Challen is arguably Australia's leading cave diver. Oh. Having pushed the limits of this cave to 194 metres, he noticed his breathing becoming erratic. And as I'm going down, and I just started breathing really heavily, <coughs> and it's just like a self-perpetuating thing, you know, you try and relax and chill and and you just can't. He just had time to ditch his guide reel and rise to a safer depth before the carbon dioxide in the mixed gases he was breathing rendered him unconscious. Once you get behind the eight ball with your CO2, you, you can't catch up, you know? At these depths and in this cold, nobody knows what will happen until it does. 
There's definitely a 200 metre dive there for someone that wants it. <laughs> the team is approaching the limits of human physiology and current technology. Nowhere in the world are sport divers going so deep in such cold waters, but Harris is motivated by an explorer's desire to find out where the water feeding the cave originates. In the process, the team is discovering new life forms, critical to the health of the aquifer. The importance of such steiger fauna and their relevance to water resources and climate change is just being realised. In 2012, Harris's team will again push back the limits of human endurance while they attempt to solve the mystery of the Pierce resurgence. <laughs>